time blocking. Here's the thing about time blocking. It is the blueprint of your day. And here at Impossible to Fail, I am all about the blueprint. Time blocking is literally the blueprint for your day that you're gonna follow to make sure you get it done, that you get everything done that you need to, to move that needle closer, to making the money, to establishing the success that you need in business and in life. Now, here's the thing about time blocking, okay? It's not sexy. It's not fun. It's not ultimately deeply fulfilling. I'm not super passionate about time blocking, but what I am passionate about is the results that time blocking brings me. Because you see, when I get my time blocking done, I get the results that I want. Therefore, I commit to time blocking because I know it's something that is necessary for me in order to win. And remember, winning is getting what you want. And raise your hand if you want to get what you want. Yeah, both hands in the air for sure. So I'm gonna give you five tips for time blocking right now that you can implement today to start being more efficient with your day, take control, make sure you can achieve the success you need to as fast as possible. Tip number one, start making your perfect week schedule. Now, here's a quick example of a time blocking template that I provide for my real estate students and that uh, I use in my real estate coaching program, Earth to Orbit. In time blocking, as you can see, all we're doing is establishing time. I like 15 minute increments in the day from wake up until the time your workday is done. That's gonna allow you to make sure you can visualize everything you need to do throughout the day and you stick to that schedule no matter what. Now, in order to start making it, you don't need a big fancy template. You go to Excel or Numbers or a Word document or you know a napkin or, <laughs> or a notepad whatever you do to write it down just start writing it down okay now the caveat you want to avoid here is getting stuck in analysis paralysis and that's the biggest problem so many entrepreneurs or just people in general have when they start time blocking is is you're worried about like oh well once i write it down you know is this really should i really do this at one or should i do it at 1 30 i don't you know and, and you start kind of like dissecting the minutia of of time blocking realize that this is your best guesstimate. If you've never time blocked before, this is your best guesstimate of what is gonna work. That's all it is, okay? You can always change it later. So don't worry about like it being set in stone forever. This is not your forever schedule. This is the schedule you're gonna try right now. You're gonna roll with it for a few weeks, see how it goes and modify as necessary. So just commit to writing it down Monday through Friday, Saturday, if you work on Saturdays. Uh, as an entrepreneur, you probably do Sundays. Sometimes you gotta work seven days a week, man. I know I did when I started my, uh, my real estate career, man. I worked seven days a week relentlessly for about seven to eight months until I really started getting paid the big money to be able to dial back and, and scale but there is that launching period there where you just, you might have to work seven days a week. So if you need to make a Monday through Sunday schedule, you know, just do it until you don't have to do it anymore. Okay. So just start writing it down. So you have a framework. That's step number one. Step number two, realize that not all days will be the same. A lot of people have this misconception when they start time blocking that like, oh, I got to do the same thing every day. No, you don't. And you probably shouldn't because that's going to get boring real quick. It's going to be hard to buy into. Uh, make each day a little bit different in some ways, depending on the task that you need to do. As an example, I like macro batching and I uh, discovered this through Michael Hyatt's book, Free to Focus. Oh my gosh, what an incredible book. I highly encourage you to read it. Macro batching is simply taking similar tasks and batching them all into a window of time. As an example, my one-to-one -one coaching clients, uh, I limit my one-to-one -one coaching clients to 10 so that I make sure I have enough time during the week to do the other things I need to do. And so I'm gonna do five calls on Monday and five calls on Friday, and I do them in the mornings. And that's that's how I like to do it. So that way, Mondays and Fridays, I know I get, I get my, my coaching hat on. I get in that mindset like, all right, today's coaching day. I'm gonna spend the first half of each day coaching. And, and I can get into the groove, I get in the flow, and that way it, it's just easier for me rather than doing one to two calls each day. And so I like the way that's broken up. So experiment with that, see what works for you there, okay? Now, one thing you do need to realize as we go into number three is that there are some things that you will have to do every single day. And those are your IPAs, your income producing activities. Sometimes I'm gonna to refer to these as daily drills, meaning kind of the, the, the basic staples of success in your industry. 
as an example in real estate, lead generation, lead follow-up, lead conversion. I mean, those are the most important activities a real estate agent needs to be doing to bringing in new money. Whatever business you're in, client acquisition, forming new relationships, uh, having those conversations, calling people in your funnel that have expressed interest but haven't purchased your product yet. Those are the things that you need to be doing every day. Uh, and then other things revolve around them. Now, as far as when to do those IPAs, I encourage you to do them in the morning, okay? So chances are that your mornings will look generally very similar and your afternoons will probably look different. I think the mornings need to be that time you do your IPAs because if you wait until after lunch, it's probably not gonna happen. You gotta deal with fires, things come up, you got appointments in the afternoon. The mornings are the best time to do the most high value work, which is definitely gonna be those IPAs, the income producing activities. So put those in the morning, master those daily drills that you need to. That's step number three. Step number four, build in buffer time. Things happen, life happens, right? I mean, if you got kids like I do, trust me, things are gonna come up. Even if you don't have kids, things are gonna come up. You know things come up, right? You gotta run to the doctor or something comes up in your business, you gotta put out a fire. As a real estate agent, sometimes things come up, I gotta run out to a property unexpectedly or deal with a client. These things happen all the time. And so by building in buffer time, 30 to 60 minutes of buffer time a day, you've now built in time for things to go wrong or go unexpectedly. Now, if you have no fires to put out that day, awesome, you have more time to do IPAs or continue to scale and work in your business. Uh, if things do go a little bit unexpectedly, you don't have to worry about it because you've built in the time during that, during that day. And if things go really out of whack and your whole day gets messed up at the end of the day, you can easily reassign the tasks that you had today to do tomorrow. So build in that buffer time, that's number four. Lastly, step number five, is gonna be that you're modifying over time. Again, do not get stuck in the mindset that once you write it down, this is your forever schedule. Your schedule is gonna change as you make more money, as you become more successful, uh, as you delegate more and hire more people and can create more leverage and time freedom for yourself, which is the goal as an entrepreneur, your day-to-day -day is gonna change. This is not your forever schedule, it's your right now and just the, the very short-term foreseeable future schedule. Now, what you do need to do, number one, is, is make sure that at least once a quarter, you come back to your schedule and you modify it and, and you really evaluate as objectively as you can what's working and what's not working. Now, you can evaluate and change it up more frequently, but I really strongly recommend that you stick at least 21 days, at least three weeks to committing to sticking to that schedule no matter what, because the only way for a blueprint to know if it works or not is to commit to it, stick to it, and then see what's working or not. When I coach people in health and nutrition in, in the bodybuilding and fitness world, and we have our, our coaching calls, um, and if they start out with, hey, Rob, I'm not seeing the results I expected, I didn't, I didn't lose any scale weight, or I don't really have any strength gains this week, the first question I ask is, what didn't you follow in the blueprint? I mean, I'm assuming you didn't follow something 100%, otherwise we probably would have seen the results. Now, if they guarantee, if they swear to me, no, dude, I, I completely followed the blueprint, I'm gonna tell them, okay, let's roll with it for another week, and if we still don't have the results, maybe you're just a little stalled out, then we'll make a modification. But until I know that you're sticking to the blueprint 100%, you can't modify it because you don't actually know if your blueprint works or not. The only way to know if it works or not is to actually stick to it 100%. Zero excuses, baby. I don't want to hear them. Save the drama for later. I don't want to hear your excuses. I just want to hear about your results. So if you haven't stuck to the blueprint, you, again, you got to commit for at least three weeks. If you commit to it for three weeks, that's enough time to know what's working and what's not. So again, to review, number one, just create the perfect week schedule. It's your best guesstimate of what's going to work for you. Number two, uh, throw in some variety. Uh, not all days are gonna be the same. Number three, your IPAs, your income producing activities, you're gonna get those done in the morning. Number four, you're gonna build in that buffer time. So if anything comes up, you got it covered. And number five, you're gonna modify at least once a quarter and at a minimum every three weeks. Do not do it shorter than three weeks. Give the blueprint time to work before you make any changes at all. By implementing these time blocking uh, frameworks, these blueprints, I guarantee you, you're gonna start seeing more traction if you implement it. Time blocking is the blueprint of your day. It's gonna make sure that you are guaranteeing your success in your business and your life. Implement time blocking today. Reach out to me and let me know how it's going and how I can further help you time block to crush it and make it impossible to fail.